Hey, Fotes is a man once again, and since these are since watching an episode is only forty-five minutes, doing at least maybe a couple, and then upload them and see if anyone is interested in me continuing this, and just to do something different. But uh, yeah, this one is <clears throat> last one was of January first, nineteen ninety-six. So, of course, the next episode of Monday Night Raw, January 8th, 1996. And by the way, uh, if you're wondering, this is for, there's a channel named MLG Troy One who uploaded all these uh, Raws from 1996. So, just giving them a watch. And I'll put the link down below in case anyone else there wants to give them a watch. Um, I think, like, the guys, like, selling his DVDs and stuff like that and uh, seems like a nice guy but just mention that in case anyone out there wants to watch these on YouTube who knows how long they'll be on there so who knows you can watch this and it won't be there anymore who knows but wanted to take advantage when it's on YouTube but January 8th, 1996, the second Raw of 1996. Of course, the previous one, January 1st, that I talked about, had like that weird Monday Night Raw Pro Bowl where you had all those teams and you had like a very boring one of the Hogwins versus Hunter Hearst Helmsley and one match which was like fucking 30 seconds long with Diesel and Mabel and I'm like what the fuck it's the Teen Mabel it's the winner of Teen of the Rain it was only 30 seconds what's the deal here first of all I gotta say this episode of Raw January 8th 1996 I can't mention the date because it is the first time we see in the WWF Yes, I know it's WWE, but I like calling it WWF, and it was WWF at the time. The first time we see the Ringmaster, it's the debut of the Ringmaster, the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase, who has his Million Dollar Belt, and he has a new wrestler that he's going to manage, and it's the Ringmaster. If you're wondering what's the big deal of that, January 8th, 1996 was the premiere of, give a little hint, you talk about your Psalms, you talk about your John 316, Austin 316 says I just whipped your ass, Steve Austin, he was in the WCW as Stunning Steve Austin, had matches with like Ricky Steamboat, Ric Flair, and Arn Anderson, Anderson, uh, Steam, uh, and Stunny, he was a Stunny Steve Austin. He got brought into the WWE. Then he had worked in a uh, little bit in ECW because he got fired from WCW. He worked in ECW doing promos. Paul Heyman called him to go up to ECW to give some uh, promos about his anger on being fired by WCW and all that. Got called into WWF from ECW. And even Stone Cold today would tell you it was a shitty gimmick character that they had him play. And you watch, it is a shitty character. <laughs> And you just see that he, you just tell he was uncomfortable because the remaster, I mean, it was a debut, it wasn't a match, it was just pretty much him coming out and talking, it's like, press your hand to the screen to touch my hand, and just a very boring, generic character, and then Brother Love was in the ring with him, another no annoying fucking character, Brother Love. But the remaster just, I guess the next episode, which I'll probably do like three and then upload them and see what people feel like. The next one will be the first match of the remaster, 
really the first match of Steve Austin in WWF. And of course, we all know him as Stone Cold Steve Austin later on. And 1996 is really the year because it's later on where he leaves Ted DiBiase and then becomes more Stone Cold. And we'll also sort of see the beginning of that. 1996, which is pretty interesting. But yeah, it was really weird as I watch this go, holy shit, I know that I had Steve Austin. Holy shit, this is the second one I'm, re I'm reviewing of 1996. Of doing this, and it's fucking Steve Austin. As, a, you know, the, his first time as is in this shitty gimmick character as the ringmaster. So I, that wasn't the first thing of the show, but I had to bring that up because, come on. It's the debut of Steve Austin, WWF, who would become my personal favorite wrestler of all time, Stone Cold Steve Austin. I mean, hell yeah. Cue the glass shattering. <laughs> But in this one, you had um, first match was Jeff Jarrett versus Hakushi. Jeff Jarrett, this is a guy that uh, also knows Double J. Um, I think he was a guy who helped help was one of the originators of TNA wrestling. I could be wrong, uh, or at least was one of the big guys behind the. Uh, TNA Total Nonstop Action Wrestling. And I think he's gone on to try to get another one started up. And Hakushi, I'm not sure what all happened to this guy. Hakushi was a guy who was an Asian guy who had pretty much white pants and had like little uh, lettering. Almost looking like little tattoos, like lettering over his body. And Hatrushi, I pretty much, I don't know how long when he debuted, but he probably became a jobber pretty quickly. And a jobber means a guy who is brought in to lose and make the guy they want to push look good. And like the storyline for Jeff Jarrett was that he had hit this guy named Ahmed Johnson. Which we see later on in this episode. Now Jeff Jarrett, I'm watching this, I'm like... I swear, I'm like, is the character really kind of like a rip-off? Well, I don't know if I want to say rip-off, but... Like them, they like, just a country, western version of Haunty Top Man, which I was never a fan of Haunty Top Man. Was never a bit was never a fan of Haunty Top Man. Because it's like, okay, it's the guy who's musically inclined, has a guitar, uh, doesn't smash anyone with a guitar in this one, but is willing to smash a guitar into someone's face. And he does the strut, which makes me think of Ric Flair, when Ric Flair does the strut. But Ric Flair does it better. Jeff Jarrett was one of those guys I never cared for. Never cared for Jeff Jarrett. Again, it's, it just makes me think of the Haunty Taunt Man, which I wasn't a fan of the Haunty Taunt Man. Then doing this strut, which just makes me think of Ric Flair, who did that better. And Hakushi, he was there. He did a couple things. I mean... He won on the top buckle and did like a flying shoulder tackle. Did a drop kick. You do hear Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon and Jerry the King Lawler are on commentary. You do hear Vince McMahon goes, What a maneuver! When Jeff Jarrett does his net breaker. Hakushi does this thing where he does all these flips. But then it's just all these flips. And then just to like... Do you have like a little bit of a tap on the elbow? And I'm like, it doesn't really seem like all that work just to get this sort of flip 
So you back to the opponent and then sort of toss a little to the back with your elbow out. It just seems like a, a whole lot of work for not much effect. Uh, and you have Jeff Jarrett doing the heel thing and he's like, forget this, I'm leaving. But then he comes back because he doesn't want to get counted out. And Hakushi tries to do, you know, tries to fly. But Jeff Jarrett gets his knees up and does a figure four, which Hakushi taps out. And Jeff Jarrett wins. So, not much of a match unless you're a big fan of Hakushi and a couple moves he did, but. Jeff Jarrett didn't seem like he did too much. I mean, a, a net breaker and you know, lifting or some other tiny stuff. I mean, whatever. Sort of a whatever match. Then it's talk about the upcoming Royal Rumble and who's going to be in it. And these names, I'm like, who the fuck are these guys? Like, who the fuck is Doug Gilbert? I don't know, who the fuck is Kama? K-A-M-A. Who the fuck is Kama? Or Fatu, Fatu, F A T U, or Steep of the Body Donnas. What the fuck? Who the fuck are the Body Donnas? It shows how long I've seen. I mean, way, 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 way back. And this is like taped on videotapes. <laughs> so, long ass time ago. And also, this one, an, an insane dentist called Isaac Yankum, DDS. Which actually, Isaac Yankum is actually Kane. Uh, I think, is his name like Glenn Jacobs or something like that? But So you want to watch, it's like Isaac Yankum, who I guess is on the next week's show. Technically, it'll be Undertaker versus Isaac Yankum, will be Undertaker versus Kane, because that's the guy who would be Tom Kane. Uh. And also Vader, and they pretty much show that video again of Vader, and it's Vader time, and I like Vader. Uh, throughout, you have a little bit of Shawn Michaels' press conference where he's like against Doctor's orders. He is going to enter the Royal Rumble. Uh, well, that this is a little bit later, so maybe I'll... after the Vader uh, video. Yeah, they're still doing this fake billionaire Ted Rasslin war room with the Hutster and the Nacho Man and Steam Gene, aka Mean Gene Okerlund, but it's supposed to be Steam Gene. Pretty much making fun of the guys who left and went to WCW. Which I'm like, well, if you weren't going to use them anymore, like, you're pretty much telling people like Macho Man and stuff that, sorry, you're done. What are they supposed to do? Say, oh, well, fuck. But, you know, if you're not going to use them, they want to go somewhere they want to be used. I'm not, I don't think that was the way for Hogan, but I'm talking about like, I'm talking about like Macho Man. I think one thing they were pissed about Vince when he left was, I could be wrong, but I remember hearing, I've heard of the rumors that Macho Man had slept with Stephanie McMahon. But no one has said if that's ever true or not. The other thing I heard was that when Macho Man left, he took the Slim Jim deal with him. Which was a bit of money for WWF. And so that's the reason why Vince was really pissed off. Because Macho Man took the Slim Jim deal with him. And you know Slim Jim going, well fuck it, we're going to go wherever, wherever Macho Man is. Because we don't want... Just come on, it's Macho Man Slim Jim. I, that could be wrong. I'm just saying those are rumors that I've heard. But yeah, they're still making fun of those guys who left for WCW. And you get the second match, Ahmed Johnson versus some guy named Jeff. <laughs> That's the best way to describe it. Some guy named Jeff. They said his last name. I don't remember his fucking last name. Uh, so Ahmed John Ahmed Johnson, he's a big muscle guy, and uh, 
some people will think this is a shitty comparison, but he was kind of this era's Butter T. Again, I'm sure that's a stupid reason, but he reminded me a little, not personality-wise of Butter T, but just the fact he's, you know, he's big muscle gob is also athletic as well. And yes, for folks out there, yes, he happens to be black. And he, I think we're later on, be Intercontinental Champion. And the reason I brought that up is that you do know as in WWF that... Name how many people who are white who were the heavyweight champion in WWF's history. Now name how many heavyweight champions happen to be black. You know, I mean, this is the same company that has the junkyard dog. And, you know, stuff like that. But, uh, you know, I'm just saying, you know, if you think about it, how many times have this champion been a white guy? And how many champions have there been with a black guy? <laughs> Pretty, you know, a bit... I'm just saying, just think about it, so. Ahmed Johnson, I, I mean, another thing I miss is, uh... I, I like this Ahmed Johnson. I, I liked him. I think what happened, something health-wise, like kidneys or something, kidney problems, so he's out of for a few months, and then by the time he got back, I don't know specifically when the attitude error started creeping in, in 96, 97, but I think it just, you know, he tried to fit in there, and... Uh, but, you know, in this era, I remember liking Ahmed Johnson. And also, that's another thing. Like I said, this guy, this some guy named Jeff. That's another thing about back in the day. You actually have people who were just jobbers. You, they don't really have jobbers nowadays. I mean, there could be a guy who you know who, if you look between the lines, he is a jobber. But there's no, not really any people that are specifically jobbers. So if you see some guy named Jeff Thompson or... What was the famous one? The Brooklyn Brawler. Or some guy named Montoya. Which you see later. Some guy's like, who the hell's that? You know, well, that's a jobber. That's a guy who's there to lose. To make the other guy look good. And I miss that. To say, that's, sometimes it's just fun to watch. Like here. Where you taste a guy and bid slam backwards. He makes this kick. Which remind me of what Booker T, he does the kick where he gets his leg up and slams the back to lay down on the guy's back. Like, it's kind of like a, is it called like a scissor kick or something like that? There's a really nice kick. Powerful kick. I uh, think like a spine buster. And gets rid of the guy really quick in like two minutes. And does his move, which I had to look up, it's the I think it's called the Pearl River Plunge. Which he takes a guy between, puts his head between his legs, lifts him up, and then quickly sits down while pom power bombing him. A sit out double underhook power bomb. And, uh, which. I wanted to look that up so I knew the specific name for it. Looks really nice. And beat the guy up very quickly in two minutes. <laughs> but to be honest, that was a more fun two minutes than the Jeff Jarrett Hakushi match. Uh, you have the debut, like I said, the remaster, Steve Austin. You have the debut of Gold Dust. I think it was the debut of Gold Dust. Of wrestling, that is. I think you've seen them before, but I think I could be wrong. I, I'm. I thought they had said this is the first time we actually saw Gold Dust wrestle, and it's some guy named Montoya. <laughs> and he does he gives a suplex to the guy, puts the guy's head between the legs, and so it just jumps up and slams down while the guy's head's between his legs. 
he uh, what was it? He gives a clone line. Uh, And then gives a certain net break to where he takes the guy, lifts him up, and then slams him down. I don't know if that's called a Hainman's net breaker or what it's called, but takes a guy, head here, lifts him up, and then slams his body down to the ground and pins him. Damn, pretty quick match, but uh, Montoya got like one or two things in there, but Gold does took care of him. And Gold does. I will say he's definitely an athletic wrestler, but of course it's the son of Dusty Rhodes. I believe his real name is Dustin Rhodes. So, despite him being a sexually ambiguous character, which you know brought heat, uh, because you know there were people like, "Oh, oh no," which again, I mean, let's face it, WWF do does do stereotypes. <laughs> Once in a blue moon, but uh, still a pretty decent wrestler. And that's where you sh then you get Shawn Michaels saying he's going to compete in the Royal Rumble against Doctor's Orders. People giving reactions to that, like Diesel, Kevin Nash, Razor Ramon, Scott Hall, and Owen Hart. That was the, all. This was the first half of the forty-five minutes of this Raw. And pretty much the second half was one match, and I think it was an encore from an In Your House pay-per-view match. So I guess they just showed this match again, which was on pay-per-view. Which, okay. Damn good match. Um, again, it took pretty much the second half of the show. It was a pretty damn good match. It was Brett the Hitman Hart versus the British Bulldog. With this girl, Diana, watching from out of the ring and Diana is the thing Bret Hart's sister and the wife of Davy Boy the British Bulldog may he rest in peace <clears throat> really good because he did a lot of stuff he did Bulldog running uh, Bret nasty like ch chest into the buckle really nasty looks really hard like ooh like you were hurt back and forth uh, British Bulldogs got the best of him, and then headlocks. Uh, I think like an inverted atomic drop. Uh, gets you know, Brett gives that to Bulldog. Brett gives uh, puts his head down to the Bulldog's chest. Gives a Bulldog, which is grabs the guy from the head, runs, jumps, and slams his head to the mat. Uh, gives him a pile driver. And the match is going on, and all of a sudden on screen it says, Viewer discretion warning, graphic content. And I go, whoa, what? And you realize soon why they did that. Which they probably, they probably wouldn't do that now, but even in the PG era, but. Uh, Bulldog does his thing where he, He's on the top buckle, and Brett is going to do something, and Bulldog throws Brett into the ropes, and think of this as the ropes, and think of these as Hitman's legs. It goes wham on the ropes, and his balls are pretty much now up to Brett's stomach. And part of me wonders if that was acting, of course, you know, wrestling, acting is part of wrestling. Or if something went wrong and that was harder than it was supposed to be. I don't know. Because it looked like he slammed it really hard. Like Bulldog threw him in really hard into up Brett's nuts. Because it just seemed a lot like BAM. Like if someone just did a strong kick to your nuts. You'd have to feel it. And he slides down. Because then what happens next is Bulldog throws Brett, like hits him from behind, and Brett tumbles and hits his head, boom, right on the steps. Like, boom, right on the steps. And gets Brett over here, and Brett's bleeding. 
he's bleeding from his head. Which is, I don't think it was a typical thing at this point in WWF. Uh, it's like, holy shit, Brett's bleeding. And he's bleeding pretty uh, badly from his head. And blood's coming down. You know, you have pools of blood on the ground outside the ring. Uh, and like, oh shit. And, you know, Bulldog still gets bread and is beating him up and gives bread a power driver and gives him a suplex. And even to a point where the camera was going to go right to Brett's head and Vince McMahon even says, let's please if we can keep our cameras wide. Again, I don't know if, if that was like, oh shit, he's bleeding, that shouldn't have happened. Or if that's, Okay, we're going to do this so that we can get focus away from WCW onto WWF, but I don't know. And like Bulldog puts Brett in this sort of bow and arrow submission. And Brett gets out of it trying to do the sharpshooter can't. And he does, Brett did some good stuff. I mean, you just see that there's like blood over the mat, like Jesus, and like slams the British bulldog backwards. Uh, they have this thing where they both clothesline each other. Uh, Bulldog's coming, and he Brett bends down and lifts him up, so Bulldog flies out of the ring. Uh, Brett does a suicide dive and punches. Uh, pits up Bulldog and gets his balls. Hit the, the rail. Uh, gives him another clothesline. One of those, uh, I think it's called a pendulum bat breaker on the Bulldog. Gets him on the top rope and gives the Bulldog like a super suplex. And like... Bulldog turns this one thing, slams Brett to the buckle, and he runs. And Brett lifts his head, and it looks like Bulldog hit his head, boom, hard into the Brett's legs. And poo, and Bulldog falls down. Parmy wonders, like, you know, he lift his legs and wanted to really kick Bulldog in the head from bleeding, but again, it could be all part of the show, but I don't know. Um, and does this little roll-up where he like takes Bulldog's arms and does a little roll-up and then gets the, the three-count Brett wins. But damn, that was a damn good match. I mean, that was a match from a pay-per-view, I guess, in your house, but damn, that was a good match. Damn good match. And Diana like barely had emotions <laughs> Probably would have worked if she had like a little bit more emotion considering what was happening. Like once in a while they go, but it's like wow, you know, at least a little bit more emotion. Hey, what do I know? And pretty much it ends with the Undertaker talking about how in the future he's going to fight Bret Hart. And the last thing is more of the billionaire Ted wrestling room. And this just kills me. I mean, okay, they're making fun of Hulk Hogan with this guy named the Huckster. Ted, you know, Ted Turner. The Nacho Man, or, you know, making fun of the Macho Man. And then they actually do this knock about steroids. Because that was the thing that I forgot to mention in my last video. Because this is the WWF New Generation. Because there was this uh, scandal years before this a steroid scandal drug scandal which you know quite a few people who had taken steroids had to you know get out of there or do something and that's why you saw a lot more sort of leaner guys like a Shawn Michaels or a Bret Hart or you know even a Razor Ramon or such but uh, I thought, wow, it was so weird that they're knocking on steroids. And I'm like, you're the WWF. 
and you're not the WCW about steroids? And like what they say, the new WWF generation, there's nothing old or artificial here. I'm like, there's nothing old or artificial here in the WWF? Yeah. And then they even have a fucking drug advisory, like, text. Drug program advisory, please call. And I'm like, I just, you know. Just, you know, kill me with that. But, anyway. Second episode of Raw of 1996. Again, people wonder, well, why don't we review 1993, 1994, 1995? I don't own them. I don't have them. They're not all on YouTube. Otherwise, I would. I think the guy mentioned, hey, you know, I, I'll, this guy, MLG Troy, once said, hey, I'll sell them. You know, 20 bucks a year or something. Well, I gotta save up. And it'll be quite a bit. And for all I know, by the time I have it saved up, it'll be fu fucking gone. But, oh well. I'm having fun at least looking at this. But, yeah, January 8th, 1996 of this Raw. Jeff Jeffers or really wasn't much. Some videos, video of Vader, a uh, little bit of Shawn Michaels. Probably the biggest thing is the debut of Steve Austin, only as the ringmaster, but still a Steve Austin. See Gold does wrestle. You see uh, you know, Ahmed Johnson, pretty much a squash match against a jobber. And I guess you could say an encore of a really good match between Bret the Hitman Hart and British Bulldog. Um, so, pretty, I would probably say I like this a bit more than the last one. I mean, come on, just for the fuck of, and when I mean the last one, I mean the January 1st one, because come on, it's fucking Bret Hart versus British Bulldog or, and a pretty good match. It's like, oh shit, there's blood. <laughs> I'm like, this is not the Attitude Error yet. And holy shit, it's blood. It's not ECW, but there's blood. Oh, it just surprises me for some reason. If it's not the Attitude Era or ECW, and holy shit, there's blood. And plus, I mean, again, Steve Austin, first time, granted, as the ring master, but cool, that's the first time he was in WWF. So, it was pretty cool. By the way, thanks for watching. Take care. Let me know if you want me to do more of these for the year of 1996. And we will see you later. Bye-bye.